Today we will talk about the NICE guideline about fetal monitoring in labor. Certain amendments were made in this guideline as compared to 2017 fetal monitoring guideline and we will specifically emphasize on those points here. So let us discuss the NICE guideline about fetal monitoring in labor which was published in December 2022. This guideline emphasizes on the discussion with the patient about her care plan. So discuss fetal monitoring options with a woman as a part of her, her antenatal care and document the discussions and decisions in her personalized care plan. Now, from the moment a patient enters the labor room till the delivery of the baby, a woman has the right to get information about each and every plan of management. So throughout the labor, provide women with information on fetal monitoring methods being advised and the reasons for this advice. This guideline also gives importance to the birth companion. So support the woman's decision about fetal monitoring during the labor include birthing companions in these discussions if appropriate and if that is what the woman wants document these discussions and decisions in women's notes next the involvement of the senior midwife and obstetrician is also very important so the guideline says that keep woman and her birthing companion informed about what is happening if additional advice or review is being sought by the care team for example from senior midwife or an obstetrician Next is the appropriate documentation, which is extremely important. So perform and document a systematic assessment of the condition of the woman and unborn baby every hour or more frequently if there are concerns. So at least after every one hour, we should document what's going on and what is our plan of management. Include the birthing companions in these discussion if appropriate and if that is what the woman wants. Next is the fetal heart rate monitoring and the overall clinical picture of woman and the baby. So fetal heart rate monitoring is a tool to provide guidance on the fetal condition and not a standalone diagnostic tool. The findings from the monitoring needs to be looked at together with the developing clinical picture for both woman and the baby. Next is the importance of one-to-one -one support, which in global literature is defined as the ratio of one midwife to one woman. So the NICE guideline says that ensure one-to-one -one support is maintained by having a midwife remain with the woman throughout the labor. If the midwife needs to leave the room or there needs to be change in the staff, ensure woman knows this is happening. Next point is about the choice of intermittent versus the CDG for fetal heart rate monitoring. So perform an initial assessment of antenatal risk factors for the fetal compromise at the onset of the labor to determine whether intermittent auscultation or CTG is offered as the initial method of fetal heart rate monitoring. So that depends upon the overall clinical picture and the risk factors of the woman and her baby. Next point is also about uh, the importance of involvement of a woman in her care plan. So confirm with the woman which method of fetal monitoring has already been advised as a part of her personalized care plan. Next point is also about the significance of risk assessment and any change of the care plan. So explain to the woman that risk assessment is a continual process and the advised method of fetal heart rate monitoring may change throughout the course of labor. Next point is about the significance of whole clinical picture. So advice she is given by her midwife or obstetrician on the method of fetal heart rate monitoring will take into account the whole clinical picture. Next point is about the use of intermittent auscultation and real-time ultrasound assessment. So offer women with a low risk of complications fetal heart rate monitoring with intermittent auscultation when in established first stage of the labor. So we don't need the continuous monitoring in low risk patients. And if no heartbeat is detected, offer urgent real time ultrasound assessment to check the fetal viability. Next point is about what is included in the whole clinical picture. So carry out a full review taking into account the whole clinical picture including antenatal and existing or new intrapartum risk factors, maternal observations, contraction frequency including hypertonus and the progress of the labor. Now when to transfer a woman from midwifery unit to obstetric care unit, this is what explained here. So the guideline says that if fetal heart rate concerns are confirmed, transfer the woman from midwifery led 
to obstetric led care providing that it is safe and appropriate to do so now we put uh, some women on the continuous ctg monitoring but we can come back to the intermittent auscultation in what situation can we take that step the guideline says that return to intermittent auscultation if continuous ctg monitoring has been started because of concerns arising from intermittent auscultation but the ctg trace is normal after 20 minutes unless the woman decides to remain on continuous ctg monitoring now when there is suspicion of fetal distress or fetal compromise what to do consider a lower threshold for escalation when there are any antenatal or intrapartum risk factors that could lead to fetal compromise next point is about mobility of the patient during labor so encourage and help women to be as mobile as possible to find positions that are comfortable for them and to change position as often as they wish and when to offer the continuous ctg offer continuous ctg monitoring as a part of fetal assessment if any antenatal or intrapartum risk factors for fetal compromise are present next a woman may ask her about her definitive care plan so advice about her care during labor and birth will be based on an assessment of the several factors including her preferences her condition and the condition of her baby as well as the finding from the ctg the role of telemetry is also explained in this guideline so ensure wireless transducers are kept charged and maintained so that they are ready to use there is also importance of wired transducers as well so switch from wireless to wired transducers as soon as possible if there is signal loss which is not resolved by reducing the distance between the base unit and the woman in order to confirm whether or not there is clinical problem now this chart is from that guideline and it tells us about the indications of continuous CTG monitoring. So offer continuous CTG monitoring to the woman in labor if it is in her personalized care plan in these conditions like if she is having the previous cesarean birth or other full thickness uterine scar, any hypertensive disorders needing medications, prolonged rupture of the membranes, any vaginal blood loss suspected chorioamnionitis and pre-existing diabetes like type 1 or type 2 or gestation diabetes requiring medications next point is also about discussion with the woman about any sort of change so discuss with the woman any changes identified since the last review and the implication of these changes including the birth companion in this discussion if appropriate and if that is what the woman wants Next point is about the involvement of another clinician or fresh eyes. So obtain an in-person review of every hourly assessment by another clinician, fresh eyes for women on CDG to be completed before the next assessment takes place. Next point is about the identification of high risk pregnancies. So be aware that intrapartum risk factors may increase the risk of fetal compromise and that intrapartum risk factors that develop as labor progresses are particularly concerning. Consider continuous CTG monitoring with the use of oxytocin. Consider continuous CTG monitoring if based on the clinical assessment and multidisciplinary review that are concerns about other intrapartum factors that may lead to fetal compromise. Now, if we have the presence of meconium that may lead to complications such as the fetal meconium aspiration syndrome. Recognize that the type of monitoring methods used in the woman's choice and support her decision. Be aware that meconium is more common post-term but should still trigger a full risk assessment and discussion with the woman about the option of CTG monitoring. Review the fetal heart rate monitoring results including any previous CTG as a part of hourly risk assessment and in conjunction with other antenatal and intrapartum risk factors and determine if there are any changes in the baseline fetal heart rate variability and decelerations. If there are changes in fetal heart rate pattern over time which indicate a change in baby's condition, review antenatal and intrapartum risk factors for hypoxia. When reviewing a CTG, assess and document the presence of accelerations. This guideline also emphasizes on simultaneous palpation of the woman's pulse while listening to the fetal heart rate. Be aware that it is particularly important to confirm the fetal heart rate in the second state of the labor when it is easier to mistakenly auscultate maternal rather than fetal heart rate. 
and if the concerns about differentiation between maternal and fetal heart rate remains or if fetal heart rate cannot be heard obtain an urgent review by an obstetrician or senior midwife ensure that the ctg trace is of high quality and if not take action to improve the trace for example by repositioning the tocodynamometer the transducer or by using the fetal scalp electrode think about the possible reasons for any changes and take these and the whole clinical picture into account when planning the ongoing care use tocodynamometer to record contraction frequency and the length of the ctg trace when we have fewer than five contractions in 10 minutes, we label it as wide. When we have five or more contractions in 10 minutes, leading to reduced uh, resting time between the contraction or hypertonus, we label it as amber color. Next is about patient counseling. Explain to the woman what is happening and ensure that she has adequate pain relief. Next point is about baseline fetal heart rate. Determine baseline fetal heart rate by looking at the mean fetal heart rate, excluding accelerations and decelerations over a period of 10 minutes when the fetal heart rate is stable. When deciding if there is any change in the baseline fetal heart rate, compare it with the earlier CTG traces or recording of the fetal heart rate. In the categorization of the baseline, uh, baseline fetal heart rate, we label it as wide when we have the stable baseline of 110 to 160 beats per minute. We label it as amber when we have increase in the baseline fetal heart rate of 20 beats in a minute or more from the start of the labor or since the last review an hour ago or 100 to 109 beats per minute or we have baseline fetal heart rate which we are unable to determine. We label it as rat when we have fetal heart rate below 100 beats per minute or above 160 beats per minute. Although a baseline fetal heart rate between 100 to 109 beats per minute is an amber feature, continue usual care if this has been stable throughout the labor and there is normal variability and no variable or late decelerations. If there is any uh, absence of variability, carry out a review of the whole clinical picture with a low threshold for expediting the birth and this is a very concerning feature in that case go for expediting the birth when we label the cdg as that when we have fewer than five beats a minute for more than 50 minutes or more than 25 beats a minute for more than 10 minutes or we have a sinusoidal pattern so 5 for 50 25 for 10 remember this Next point is about increased variability. Increased variability refers to oscillation around the baseline fetal heart rate of more than 25 beats per minute and shorter episodes lasting few minutes may represent worsening fetal condition. Next point is about reduced variability. If there is a reduction in variability to fewer than 5 beats per minute combined with other CDG changes, particularly a rise in baseline fetal heart rate as this is a strong indication of fetal compromise. Next point is about decelerations. Define decelerations as transient episode when the fetal heart rate slows to below the baseline by more than 15 beats a minute with each episode lasting 15 seconds or more. An exception to this is that a trace with a reduced variability decelerations may be shallow. Take into account that the longer and later the individual decelerations, the higher the risk of fetal compromise, particularly if the decelerations are accompanied by a rise in the baseline tachycardia or reduced or increased variability. Next point is about prolonged deceleration. So start conservative measures and carry out an urgent obstetric review if there are decelerations lasting more than 30 minutes in the presence of either a rise in the baseline fetal heart rate or reduced variability. Take into account an antenatal and intrapartum risk factors such as suspected sepsis or the presence of meconium, slow progress of the labor or the use of oxytocin to determine whether there is a need for expediting the birth or not. Next point is about variable deceleration, which all of you know is an abrupt decrease in fetal heart rate below the baseline. And this guideline says that if variable decelerations persist and other CTG changes are present, obtain an urgent review by an obstetrician or senior midwife as there is a risk of fetal compromise and acidosis. So we should never ignore the variable decelerations. Support the woman to change positions or mobilize. 
Next point is about early decelerations. Take the following into account when categorizing the early decelerations. They are uncommon being and usually associated with head compression. They are not accompanied by any other CTG change such as reduced variability or a rise in the baseline fetal heart rate. Now, the definition of accelerations are also written in this guideline. So, define accelerations as transit increase in the fetal heart rate of 15 beats a minute or more, lasting 15 seconds or more. Next point is also about the CTG categorization. Include CTG categorization as a part of full assessment of the condition of the woman and the baby. Be aware categorization is a tool which quickly communicates the current state of CTG and should be used together with the antenatal and intrapartum risk factors to assess the changes over the time. Next point is also about the importance of discussion with the woman regarding her care plan. So take into account any change in the categorization of the CTG alongside other antenatal and intrapartum risk factors for hypoxia. Discuss the change and its implication with the woman and take into account her preferences when deciding how to proceed. Next point is about the importance of second opinion. Take into account that interpretation of the CTG traces in the second stage of the labor is more challenging than in the first stage of the labor. Having a lower threshold for seeking a second opinion or assistance. Now, we need to make it sure that whether we are assessing the maternal heart rate or the fetal heart rate. So ensure the fetal heart rate is differentiated from the maternal heart rate at least once in every five minutes. Consider monitoring the baby with a fetal scalp electrode if there is concern about confusing the heart rates. But if this is this cannot be achieved, expedite the birth and give the benefits of the doubt. So what to do if we observe the decelerations in the CTG if fetal heart rate decelerations are recorded? Look for other signs of hypoxia, for example, a rise in the baseline fetal heart rate or re reduction in the variability. So we have to look at the overall clinical picture of the patient and look at the CTG on the whole. Take into account that the onset of hypoxia is both more common and more rapid in the active second stage of the labor. Take an increase in the baseline fetal heart rate of 20 beats a minute or more as the red feature in the active second stage of the labor. Agree and document a clear plan with the time limits for the next time review. Continue to perform a full risk assessment at least hourly and document the findings as well. If a decision is made to expedite the birth, ensure the time at which urgent review was made and the time the decision was made or documented. Now, what to do when we observe the excessive uh, contraction frequency? In that case, reduce the contraction frequency by reducing or stopping the oxytocin if it is being used. And offer tocolytic drugs suggested regime is the subcutaneous terbutylin of 0.25 mg. Now, in some maternity settings, the facial oxygen is being used when the fetal distress is observed on the CTG. So, do not offer the maternal fetal facial oxygen therapy as a part of conservative management because it may harm the baby. However, it can be used if it is given for maternal issues such as hypoxia or as a part of pre-oxygenation before a potential anesthetic. Next point is about fetal scalp stimulation. If the CTG trace is suspicious with antenatal and intrapartum risk factors for fetal compromise, then consider digital fetal scalp stimulation. If, if this leads to an acceleration in the fetal heart rate and a sustained improvement in the CTG trace, continue to monitor the fetal heart rate and the clinical picture. Next point is about expediting the birth. Be aware that the absence of an acceleration in response to fetal scalp stimulation is worrying sign that fetal compromise may be present and that expedited birth may be necessary. Next point is about fetal blood sampling. NICE is unable to make a recommendation about fetal blood sampling because of limited evidence. Next, label the traces with woman's name, date of birth, hospital number or NHS number and pulse at the start of monitoring and the date of CTG. Individual units should develop a system for recording the relevant intrapartum events, for example, vaginal examination and sitting of an epidural in standard notes and on CTG traces. In cases where there is concern that the baby may have a sustained possible brain injury, photography, cardiotocography traits should be taken 
and store them indefinitely in cases of possible adverse outcomes. So that was all about NICE guideline about fetal monitoring in labor 2022. Subscribe on Opsen Gaini. Thank you so much. Allah Hafiz.